Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by James Flynn. James is an artist turned author. He decided to become an author after having a creativity crisis. So we're going to be talking to him about his books, especially his new book, The Hand That Pulls You Under. And we're going to let him tell his story because he has had a lot of success as an artist and as an author. James, thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, Curtis. Thank you for having me. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, it all started for me uh, when I was younger. I've always been an artist in some form or other. I always used to draw draw landscapes as a child. I used to draw cartoons and stuff. And love of art kind of transformed into graffiti during my teenage years. I grew up in, in London and that was during the 1990s. And there's a big graffiti big street art scene in London during that time. And so I spent a large part of my teenage years kind of going out and uh, doing graffiti on all over London and on train tracks and stuff like that. But of course, that, that got me into trouble after a while. So I couldn't really keep that up for long. And so when I got into my 20s, I kind of moved on again and started to, to paint a lot of portraits. I became a portrait artist and money doing that, got a few customers, built up a big portfolio. And then at some point during my late twenties or early thirties, I kind of started having these ideas for works of art that I wanted to do, but they were getting more complex and more detailed. And eventually I realized that I couldn't kind of put these ideas down in a single painting or a single drawing. And it was at that point I realized that I needed to kind of write a book. I'd, I'd always read books as a child as well. I've always been a reader. But up until that point, I've never written anything. But um, around the age of 30 or late 20s, I decided it was time to write a book. And so I put my main idea was like um, a big science fiction novel at the time. That was my first book. And, and so I set to work writing my first book and four whole years to write this thing. It was like a big learning. I spent four years on it. I did about seven drafts. The first draft was actually on paper. I actually wrote this book on paper. And then I kind of revised it and revised it again and again. And finally in 2017, I published this thing. And that was my big debut novel. That one's called Conservation. And so my, I, you could say I became an author in 2017 because that was, a, that was the year that I published my first one. And since then, I I've, I've kind of haven't looked back. Uh, since then, I've published about five books. That was my first one. Well, tell us about how you got your love for the artistic side. I know you say you grew up in England, but you're not living in England right now. So... Is that because of your travel and the places you've lived? Yeah, I actually live in Vietnam. now. I've, I've been here for almost three years. Oh, well, that's another story entirely, you know, but my love of art, I, I can't decide whether it's a kind of nature or nurture thing, really. There are a couple of people in my family who, who are artists. So maybe, maybe it kind of runs in the family. I'm, I'm undecided on that. But uh, I've, I've always loved art. And my, my family has always encouraged it as well, especially my mother. She kind of um, 
she's always uh, encouraged it in every, every way she could. But um, I love all art. I love visual arts, music, films, books. I'm into the whole spectrum, really. But, you know, I only create drawings and paintings and books. So that's my, they're my main mediums, you could say. Well, what is your goal when you write a book? What do you want the reader to feel? What is your goal in reaching the reader? Well, my, my main goal is, uh, is to actually disturb the reader. I, I'm naturally drawn towards the horror genre. And with my latest book in particular, The Hand That Pulled You Under, it, this is a book of short stories. There are 10 stories in the book. And the, the subtitle of this book is Tales of Absurdity and Lunacy. This book is, you could say it's about absurdism. It's a book about horror, absurdism, and kind of like the, the insanity of life in a way. I often describe myself as an absurdist. I, I think I think we've all just we all just find ourselves on this on this planet in this crazy life. There's no real meaning to it as far as I'm concerned. And we've all just got to kind of do the best we can. And so when I wrote this book, my newest one, I wanted every story to kind of convey that message that this that the, you know life is absurd. And so every one of these stories is crazy in its own way. And that's the main message of this one, the kind of absurdity of life. Well, tell us about your other books and tell us about the message of those books and also talk about where people can purchase your books. Yeah, my, my first book, as I say, is, is called Conservation. That could be described more of a, as more of a sci-fi, like a dystopian sci-fi novel. But with that one, there are, there are lots of uh, pessimistic undertones to it. If, if you're a fan of a happy ending, it is probably not for you. It's, it's like, it's like a really dark dystopian vision of the future. That's the one that took me four years to write. After that, my second book was, was a book of short stories. It, it was called um, The Edge of Insanity. I published that one back in 2020. And as the name suggests, the main theme of that book is, is the insanity of life. There, there are kind of 10 short stories in that one. And each, each story is, is again, it's, it's quite, it's about the insanity of life. And m most of the books, most of the stories in that book could be described as horror. Those, those stories are more horrific with a slight sci-fi edge. So I published that one, book number two in 2020. And then about 10 months later, at the end of 2020, I published my third book, which is uh, a sci-fi novella called Swarm. I've been working on this one for a while. With, with Swarm, I kind of explore the human mind a little bit more. This one is more of a psychology book, and it's about how the human mind might merge with technology one day. Swarm is actually the name of a giant prison in the book. And it's the main, the main premise of the story is like there's, there's a town in the not so distant future that's kind of overrun with crime and poverty. And so the authorities decide to build this, this huge revolutionary prison that's like a huge pyramid and all of the prisoners and inmates they're like bed bound like they're in a hospital 
and their minds are wired up to a central computer. And the central computer kind of siphons the power of their subconscious minds. And then like a team of technicians at the top of the building can type questions into the computer. And every question is, is answered by the collective power of the inmates subconscious minds. So this one is like a really deep sci-fi story. Out of book number three, we swarm. Um, now book number four, which came published book number four early this year. This, this is like, um, this is a different book altogether. It's, it's called Planet Musings from a Tormented Soul. And, and this book is like, it's like a book of short musings for me. It, it's, it's not a story. This one's totally different. For years now, I, I've been writing down my like, random thoughts I have or, or random observations about life. And so I ended up with a, with a huge file and a huge note, notepad full of these just like um, odd observations, just about two sentences long. Uh, and I decided to publish them all in a book. So th this one's... This one's more about my my personal view of the world and uh, it's just uh, observations that I've gone through life. That's that's with planet, and you can actually get one for free on Amazon. And then my newest book, the one that we've been talking about, the hand that pulls you under. This one is due to be released on the tenth of December, and. The best place to find this one is also on Amazon. I'm, I'll just give you a few examples of the stories that you'll find in this one. Um, so there are 10 stories in this book. And story number one is about a group of eccentric squatters living in an abandoned factory. And this, this man just randomly wanders into this factory one day and just gets introduced to these squatters who have been living there for years and then. And he witnesses these like bizarre parties like every week or two. And everybody's getting high on these like magic mushrooms that are growing out of the corners of this building. And then he slowly finds out where these mushrooms come from and why people react to them so strangely. And that's that story number one. There's another story about a, like a teenage prank gone wrong, where two two teenagers like, spike their friend with, with an overdose of LSD, and it kind of it kind of goes to his head, and then we find out that years later that he's he's been messed up for life. There's another story about a self-published author in the book who is so desperate to promote his book and sell copies of his book, he actually copies one of the scenes in the story and goes out and commits murder. And there, there are also a couple of stories in this book that are, that are quite erotic or even pornographic. And this is a new thing for me. I haven't done this in any of my other books. I've kind of avoided erotica. With the hand that pulls you under, I've kind of put a few stories in there. Maybe, maybe two or three stories that have like strong erotic scenes in them. There's one of them that features like a group of swingers on, on a kind of luxury spaceship orbiting the earth. And they get into like some kind of weird twisted adventure, which I won't go into because I don't want to ruin the story that one too much. But um most shocking story of all in this book has got to be story number 10, which is a story called The House of Human Pleasures. And this one is actually about a, a man and a woman. They're a couple and they met whilst 
both live in the world. And they, they share this kind of twisted, warped appetite for sex. And they basically travel the globe, going from country to country, getting into all these kinds of different sexual adventures, but in a really twisted way. And then they, they finally end up in uh, Southeast Asia, and they end up in this huge mansion where a big kind of sex party is taking place. And then it, things just get really bizarre after that. And again, I can't tell you too much because I don't want to ruin these stories, but um, that's, that's the kind of thing that you find in this, my latest one. So uh, that's, a, that's like a brief rundown of it for you. Besides your new book, are there any other projects that you're working on upcoming or current that people need to know about? Uh, well, I can, I can definitely tell you that after this book, there will be at least one more. I'm working on another book at the moment. I can't tell you when the next one will be out. Probably, probably about a year at least. And all I can really tell you about this one is that it'll be another book of short stories. I've, I've developed a love of short stories. My, my first book, as I say, was a big full-length novel. But since then, I've, I've kind of... Um, I prefer short stories now because I can pack more, more stuff into a single book. A book, a book of 10 short stories says a lot. You can really, you can really put forward a lot of ideas that way rather than just doing one long story. And I also think it's better because in today's world, you know, with social media and things like Twitter and people have developed a, a liking for short snippets haven't they you don't there are people out there who still enjoy reading big like 600 page books but i think if you ask most people nowadays they they prefer something a bit shorter so for that reason i i, I tend to focus on on short stories now and the, the next book we see after this one that's due in December, but the one after that will be another book of short stories. I, I, can't, I can't give you any info on that because I don't want to give that one away either. It'll probably be another year or a year and a half before that one comes out and gets released. Well, can you give out your contact information, your website, your social media links so people can stay connected with you and know when that other book comes out? Yeah, sure. I would say the best place to follow my work and stuff is actually YouTube these days. My YouTube name is at artist James Flynn. And Flynn is spelled F-L-Y-N-N. -N. My main website is jamesflynn.org. And... You can also find me on Twitter occasionally. My name on there is at James underscore underscore Flynn. They're the main places where you can find me. Right. You got any final thoughts before we close it out? Yeah, well, I'd just like to mention as well, if, if you're interested in uh, finding my books, if the best place is Amazon. If you go onto Amazon and search for my books, uh, Conservation, The Edge of Insanity, Swarm, Planet Earth, and The Hand That Pulls You Under by James Flynn, you can find that, those on Amazon. And you, you can also find my books on Smashwords as well, which is another book website. It's a bit less popular, but I quite like it. So. Amazon and Smashwords is where you should go to find my books. And uh, that's where you can find me online. 
And not only that, you can also sign up for James's email list on his website, jamesflynn.org. Ladies and gentlemen, please be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. Let's get James some business, get his, get his book circulating all around the world. Also, Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. James Flynn, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure.